Maybe I could get my friend. Happy, frankly. We could get Jake Girl to play in that thing. Are we rolling? Are you ready to go? Let's do it. Go for it. All right, friends, neighbors. Oh, just like that, we're starting. Yeah. Just like that, we're starting. Robots. It's time for Bingo is Life. Yay! Uh, the podcast. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I'm Jay Zair. Uh, I'm still who I am. I think <laughs> we have the to my right outside in scenic downtown Harrisonburg. The, That's right. We are outside this evening. The two Yay. and only potty potty potty. potty. <laughs> yes, we both potty, potty shell. <laughs> oh, thank God, brothers. Host of the host of the yes. Chris and Mike to Thanks. my left. Hi, the one and only Dan Easley. Hey, man, what's happening? Hey. And over here in her flying V <laughs> T-shirt, my flying V formation, w- with uh, uh, w- fresh from the other side of Court Square, the and, one and only Mum Shackles. And places other than that. <laughs> and other places <laughs> nice. other than that. Uh, how'd, how'd Bingo go? I, uh, nobody won, like, because they would have been cheering when they Yeah, left. you're right. No, it took uh, four, five, five strike, five tries just to knock a single pin down. I know it was pretty bad. Oh, I, I shouldn't have glued uh, them to the alley. Alley <laughs> earlier. It was worth a chance. To, they had a chance to win hundred fifty dollars. Hundred and fifty dollars. That and, would, that, you know, too worth, much pressure. Apparently, that yeah. was that'd be worth like eighty five dollars in nineteen ninety nine. Yes. Well, I gave almost every member of that family a chance to win that money, (laughs) and they all failed. Like even like the uh, patriarch of the family. Oh yeah. So So it's a family of losers. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, They have other skills. They got a pizza. Yeah, yeah. Eventually. No, that one kid. Oh, the the kid got it. Kind of like the like the the family just walked away. (laughs) Yeah, they're happy. They're fine. (laughs) Kind of like the Dallas Mavericks. Oh, that's right. Hot NBA take. <laughs> Dallas is coming back. What we, I don't think they are, <laughs> even though KP is injured. So what's uh, nobody? Is that nobody hockey? No, 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 this is a, never mind. Nobody I think cares. they're talking okay. about yeah. the sports ball, Dan. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are we plugging before we get into our... Oh, All we right. do have a guest in the silent Dave yeah, and Aaron yeah, chair yeah. sitting over here. He's, oh. Unless he splits before we get yeah, right. to him. No, no, it's going to be but, good. Very but, but famous Chris young is holding, man. Chris is holding his phone like he's about to say something important. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. So uh, this weekend, yes. Dan Easley is going to be playing at the best up, up, weekend I'm ever. I'm playing with one of my bands with the Automatic Sweethearts. Nice. No, oh, yeah. At 12 o'clock? Yeah, man. Right here? At, at, that, at the Shenandoah Bike, bike. Stage. If those nice. bamboo plants from weren't there, 12, we could see it from here. To 12.45. You'll have to look around the bamboo. Hmm. Well, you know what's great about that, Dan? What is that? At 12.45, the Basement Rebellion Oh, uh, yeah. Plays. Just a oh. short block or two over. Wait, you're right. both playing at the same time? Well, I know. Like, right no, after each right, other. Yeah, yeah. Go see Dan. So, come see me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cut, mm-hmm. cut out during, like, our next to last tune so that you make sure not to miss the Basement Rebellion. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Basement Rebellion will probably drown you out because they've got the bigger PA system and a very loud 14-year-old, oh, 14, 15-year-old 14 year drummer. Mm-hmm. Nah, yeah, he's oh, yeah. a good one. He's a good one. I mean, don't tell the best weekend ever, people, but I'm bringing a drum set, too. <laughs> hey. nice. Nice. Amateur Rodeo will be there. At yeah. From 2 to 2.45. Lo- Love Dog. Love Dog, 5 to 6. Who else? Uh, okay, you want me just to read them off? Oh, just the highlights of the show. Uh, Jake, Appalachian Jake Girl Band. Grass Revival, Mosaic Canville, <laughs> Bobcat, Possum, Fiddle, and Cello. That sounds kind of cool. <laughs> Hannah Johnson and Friends. Are you playing with them too, Dan? No, I don't think I'm in that group. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, You're oh, not one of yeah. the friends. Yeah. I can see you being a friend. Oh, time's passed. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> Water under the bridge. Hey, you know, Gregory I, Wallace. You know, I saw a good uh, a good band uh, this this past week. Uh, the Queen City Porch Pickers. Porch no, the Queen porch, City por- Queen, porch, porch Swingers. Swingers. They're fantastic. They were fantastic. Swingers. And they do not use a PA. No. Shout out, shout out to Remy yeah. and uh, David. Oh, God, Those are the two so people good. I know in the band. And I'm thumping on the doghouse base. And, That's it. And that was at uh, at Restless Moons. It's like a soundtrack to a Woody Allen movie. Aww. Just just forget about the Woody Allen bad stuff. And just yeah, <laughs> enjoy the music. <laughs> enjoy the music. Uh, also happening at the um, Restless Moons will be the Ragged Company show come September. Yay. So there's that whole thing, too. Yeah, that's gonna be Connections. Great. It's all connected. Uh, man, the best weekend ever. It does have so much stuff. So 
Broad Porch is having music, Sagebird, Court Square Theater is having the Pride edition Night of Illusion drag show. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much like all Saturday and oh, into the night. Fun. X2 There's Comedy music. is having pop up stand up comedy. They're not called X2. I don't know what they're called they're now. They're called Fuquaf. Fuquaf, which stands for Friendly, excuse me, Funny Womacks and Friends. Huh? Wow. Anyway. Anyways, so this weekend, Harrisonburg is going to be fun. Go, okay. Yeah, come, go. Be a good time. There it is. Look, at good. look up Best Weekend Ever on Wait, Google yeah. and you'll find it. But there's this great thing that we have happening right now, what? which is another <laughs> unexpected notion with Dan Easley. Thank you, Brittany. <laughs> Carrots aren't good for your eyes. That was a ruse the English used during World War II to hide from the Nazis that England had radar. The British claimed that there was some ace fighter pilot who ate a lot of carrots to improve his eyesight, but carrots do no such thing. Once again, the answer to the question is rutabaga. I mean, radar. <laughs> I'm Dan Easley. That was another unexpected notion with Dan Easley. Thank you. I, yeah. And if you don't care at all, we have other things to talk about. We're going to bring in our guest. We have a lovely guest this evening. Hey, this is a renaissance man. He is specially Ooh. selected for this episode number 69 because he is one of the sexiest people we know. Genetic, yeah. Genetically yeah. true. Genetically blessed, if yes, you will. Yes, he is. He is not only a gifted uh, improv artist and uh, director and, and uh, actor and musician. He's a real musician. He's a real oh, musician. Wow. He is like a jazz musician musician oh my mm -hmm. god and he's on his way to la right he's got a la hat on bringing let's welcome to the to the podcast jake girl Yay! Thank you so much. welcome aboard yeah thanks for being here man very happy to be here i've heard about this britney's talked about it so really happy to be your guest <laughs> you're well, too too complimentary though just just back i'll add in some mm. i don't know your nose is big and your nose is not okay know, four eyes you know, there we go yeah. he is wearing glasses you're in the uh <laughs> both both improv groups, right? Yeah, we, he's in uh, Rocktown Improv, mm -hmm. which just had the last show with him this yeah, past Friday. Oh, no. It was yeah, a really a good turnout. It was a really fun show. Oh, yeah. And if you still want to catch Jake doing improv improvisational mm -hmm. theater, <laughs> you can see him at his Barty Best uh, June 26th at the Sipe Center for Friendly City Fables. Are you really Ooh. leaving? Yes. Where, 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 yeah. Which coast are you headed to? West Coast. The West Coast. We're going West Coast. Mm. Above the almost, East Coast, but we got to go. We got to try the West Coast. You mm. almost went there last year, but there was a little writer strike. Which yeah, kinda, it was. Put it a damper was, on things. Exactly. It was a difficult time. The guy was supposed to move with originally, he backed off and he didn't feel good about moving there. So we kind of reassessed. Then he got a job in New York. And then I thought, okay, I'm just going to I'm gonna go ahead and do it myself. Yeah. Fantastic. Have you ever been? Yeah, actually. Twice in the in the last kind of year, and I just went there in March. Got to perform some music out there, record, met a lot of great people, some wonderful writers as well. Shout out Buck Bloomingdale. He's from Virginia. Uh, That's yeah. quite a name. Yeah, yeah, right. I know two Bucks <laughs> in my entire life, and they're both in L.A. Wow. How about, how about that? Yeah, how about that? They the, can buck, just, the buck stops there. The buck stops. <laughs> a lot of bucks it does. In LA. They could just get AI to write all this stuff now. Right? <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> signing off forever. Robots. We have AI now. <laughs> yeah. We. I, I. I told Brittany. I said, "You gotta come see. Let's go see this. This um, show. This." Senior recital at Eastern Mennonite University. And then Jake, he tricked me into a church. He tricked you into a church. Jake is playing. I knew you were a really good guitar player, like playing like with uh, the uh, Tom Petty uh, satire songs and things for the improv group. Right. He's like uh, uh, Thaddeus Jackson. Yeah, yeah. And he's up there. Thad. Who is a tremendous musician of, in his own right. You're up there like ripping off jazz wow. leads and. Uh, it was you incredible. had like the minor seven flat five. There we go. The we did some nine. of those in there. <laughs> we had some minor nines as well. Oh. We, did, we did all kinds of stuff. So Very it was great. Fancy. I was so happy to see you all there. It was such a wonderful occasion with local musicians, you know, old and new rather. And uh, Thaddeus put on a great show. And I'm just happy to be a part of it. And I loved your realization where you're just like, wow, you're you're a real player. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, I was talking to Kyle and he's like, a yeah. very not too many uh, people will do a recital and... and uh, be uh, uh, humble enough to not be the best guitarist in the uh, in the uh, in the evening. Hey man, I Thad is a good friend, yeah. and I always think musicians we should raise each other up. <laughs> right. And yeah. you speaking know, of raising each other yes. up, 
Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is the <laughs> bell. Got the ding right dong now. of the Jesus. We're back. Thank you for going music. outside. Yeah. We're back in the uh, one three five. I don't think he's actually in that tower. Oh, oh. That bell right now. Yeah, he's, he's he's getting oh, up in the checking his list and <laughs> counting it twice. So, <laughs> so Jake also writes comedy. Yeah, he writes some stuff. You write some some things. How um you did a project last year? A year mm-hmm. you did you did a. Pro- I'm gonna stop stammering and say words. <laughs> he's just so handsome, guys. We just can't keep All it right, together. Right, right. Yeah. Can you look another way or something? I'm going to look another way. Don't look directly at her. Right, or me. You're ruining my chances just, oh my with God. the ladies. Um, <laughs> There's no video. I can't look at Jay. My just look at Jay. My baby's a rat. Let's talk about Help My Baby's a Rat. Oh, help My know, Baby's my a Rat. Habit. Because that's something that Mike can actually I link saw that. to yes. and share. That was and, good. Um, and you were the one who got made that get, I mean, you happened. weren't you weren't the, the uh, primary f- driving force, but you, it would not have happened if not for you. So... Uh, Yeah, all of that. It was a real collaborative effort. Tim Wiggins, he had the script. We had met when we both were at JMU and some writing courses together. And so at that time, I was studying audio production, and I'd just done an internship doing audio for television shows on Netflix and other services. So I told him, I said, I read the script. I said, hey, let's produce this. I had done voice acting abroad before, so I was familiar with that. So, yeah, I was lead audio producer, just producer in general, co-director, um, you know, got to act in it, got to do some roles, help my babies a rat. I was afraid that was going to be a, a, a pandemic uh, casualty because he had been, we'd mm-hmm. been working on that beforehand. And then, oh, yeah. and then this, some of this little mm. epidemic thing happened, but, uh, we got it done. <laughs> or, you, know, you got it done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was Bob great. White, Bob White, <laughs> Bob White, Bob White, shout out Bob White. Um, Shannon uh, Listel Wilson, yes, I yes. believe. Yeah. Her. And I mean, we also had. Uh, Nevin, your son, Nevin was yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Troutmouth, right. Blake Kramer, like yeah. it was a bunch of locals, which was awesome. And I had a couple people, Jenny Lassell and Stephen Frost, who I'd worked with under that internship. They lent in their voices, which was great. And it was, it was just a wonderful example of putting in the time and persevering and showing that result and how great that can be. Because it was like nine or ten months of just solid, mm-hmm. head down, let's work, let's record, let's edit, let's okay produce. Etc. And the, well, the, it, the coo- it showed too. It was yeah. really good. Yeah. The coolest thing about that project was that was uh, uh, based uh, an homage to the uh, Firesign Theater, which was mm. an early yeah. '70s, yes. late '60s kind of era uh, absurdist uh, uh, comedy albums. Why am I not, yeah, like uh, sketch comedy, sketch long com- form sketch comedy, or long form just yeah comedic plays essentially. Mm-hmm. Again, shout out Tim Wiggins. You know mm-hmm. he. He's a real old soul. He loves that stuff. There he was, grew up on it, yeah. and it was inspiration for sure. We used to listen to that uh, back in the day, and uh, <laughs> you know, you'd uh, <laughs> indulge in. Uh, Did you have to actually crank the record? You had to crank the record, your own, and uh, yeah. you, you'd have to keep listening to it over and over again because you just start laughing so much, you you, you missed all the jokes. One it, of the the was, lines was from else. that that I think about almost every day is the part where they call for an emergency and the answer is, hello, 911, what do you want? <laughs> I think about that too much. Uh, Did you voice that part? Because that sounded like your voice a little bit. That was actually Tim. Oh, okay. Uh, Tim I guess you mixed the, up. Yeah, yeah, and then he was also the police officer that went over and yeah i mean again he he has very witty writing and he did a great job i know he had worked on it for years he yes. like sat on a shelf kind of and like i said we we exchanged scripts and stories and we read that and i said let's do it and i liked that it was such a local effort mm-hmm. too i love yeah. this town and it yeah. was so cool to have a lot of the local players and people there and you know shout out get john huffman jonathan mm-hmm. stewart bethany you know they she they were all involved and it was, it, I don't know, for me it was cool. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's, cool. That, I mean, this town is just big enough. Yeah. Uh, we can get away. <laughs> I mean, because all the, I know all those people, but mm-hmm. I've never worked with any of those people. So there's a, but I'm, it's a, also it's different. Uh, you work with different groups. Different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, but, I mean, you're yeah. plugged but in. It's, it's, it's cool, though, that that exists, that yeah. there are other people doing that. Getting people together, making and this uh, a, a good small art town uh, has lots of different uh, groups. It's like why that. we do this podcast. Mm-hmm. I know. I love. <laughs> well, I do love it though. I, it, yeah, it, it, it is and, very and, cool. And it's not hard. It's not as hard as you think to be a part of it. It really is. It really you just, just takes, have to leave yeah. your house. Yes, <laughs> no, 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 you do have to leave your. Well, I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, right now. Uh, you would say Ruby's open mic. Is building uh, has a little bit of a culture. Mm. Would you nice. agree with that? 
statement. Yes. Yeah, um, and then and then Restless Moons has right. got a, their own culture that it's easy to start plugging in. You show and there's, up. There's right. pro- and there's all kinds of uh, scenes that we don't even know about and never Absolutely. even touch on. That, Absolutely. You know, they're, they're but you, and then you guys are in the, uh, yes. I guess, we're, improv. We're, yeah, yeah. we're in that cult. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, culture, excuse me, community. <laughs> culture, yes. <and. laughs> Talking about the uh, 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 small art towns, what's your uh, game plan for the City of Angels? When yeah. you're out there? See, now you've squeezed out from the sponge of hair. <laughs> everything that it had to give. <laughs> now, now you're off to LA. What, what's, what are you doing? Yeah, I will carry that sponge with me. <laughs> I'll take it dried up. It is a piece of me. Uh, it is a part of me. Yeah. I, um, you know, I've really been. When I was in college, I was focusing on music, but I was also focusing on writing. And I've really taken to script writing and screenwriting, and that is something I've been working at for a while now. And I've been developing this animated series for a while, and I'm finally getting a production team together, and you know, just to continue doing that in a more professional sense, I guess, more established area. But also there's music out there. And Mm. I've already met a lot of great musicians. Shout out Bucky P and Taj. Like these are these people I met. That's another Bucky. That's the second Bucky. That's the second Bucky. Okay, Bucky the second. Actually, he's the first one. So, (laughs) and then Buck Bloomingdale is the second. But so yeah, just getting plugged in there. And I, I have a job lined up where I can be doing live production live audio production assistance for corporate gigs and things like that, um, and then some post-production. So you already have a, a professional gig lined up. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be... But I'm, you know, I I want to do that, but I want to pursue those other mm-hmm. things that I have been studying and working at tirelessly because that's that's why I'm going out there. That's why I want right. to... Right. You know, shoot So what's, what would you say is, like, been your... your, your uh, I don't know, favorite creative outlet then? Because you'd mentioned songs or songwriting, yeah. uh, prose. I, what, what, do you, what do you like to create the best? Or oh. is it all over the place? I, that's, I mean, that's a really great question. And I don't know if I should... Music has always been a huge part of me for... Right, right. But I wish you had just answered <laughs> macrame. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been easier. Right? It, it probably would have been. No, please um, continue, though. <laughs> yeah, I just... I think for me that is... It's just the ultimate art form. And yeah. I mean, you all know, you all... Everyone here has done music in some form or sense and is doing it. And it's just, I don't know, decorating time with sound. Yeah. and. What? So, uh, Look at you putting I, those words together like a writer. That was pretty. Um, but but what's interesting is the I mean, not as, not as pretty as he actually is. I know, I know. But, My but eyes still are pretty. on fire. You all are tricking your <laughs> listeners. I am Quasimodo times four. But he was a really wonderful soul, so we can't uh, yeah, say Yeah, but other than the about. hunchback, man. Yeah. Yeah, he was a looker. I have hey, a question. You know, got to balance out. I have a question, uh, which uh, it's for people who like yourselves who, who do multiple things. How do you keep? Do, uh, my problem is I'll get uh, go down a rabbit hole and you know be really playing my guitar really you know nonstop for a, a while, and then I'll switch to trying to write you know the next great yeah. screenplay, and then I <laughs> when I get back to the guitar, I can't remember which is the G string. I mean, how, mm. how, how do you keep? Sharp? Yeah, I can't. <laughs> mm. How Sorry. do you keep sharp? Like at uh, you know. It depends uh, on... It's the, episode do, 69. We got yeah. you know, to... That, oh, that was the spot. Hey, it that was, was the spot, <laughs> not the string. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, I get it. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no, but what did you do? You, you, you play every day and do you write every day? I find that a consistent, even a little bit, will help in having a routine. And with writing especially, you have to show up every day and write. It's not people think, you know, full-time writers are writing eight hours a day. That's not happening. It's like three they're doing maybe three to four in their professional settings. So if you can at least do one to two, that's better than probably a lot of people who mm. write. With music, same thing. If you just want to go through, spend 45 minutes, just concerted effort, playing a song, going through a, a practice routine, that's good. Anything like that. And so I find doing at least a little bit every day helps maintain. If I'm trying to really develop, I'll dive in hard. But right. So you're playing scales every day, Mixolydian. I'm no, these days. These days, I'm just playing songs, going through stand mm. jazz stuff because mm. I've been playing more jazz lately and writing a little bit. Uh, I've been playing on my classical a lot, which has been fun. So, tell us more about that uh, animated series you're working on. That's oh boy, fascinating. So you're writing it. Do you have an illustrator yet, or an animator, draw, drawer, drawer, cartoonist? Oh. Yeah, what do you call them people? I, know, I right? think that's called a drawerium. Drawerium. <laughs> I do have a Drarian and an Animisharian. Um, 
But yeah, I've been working on this animated series for a while. Um, it's tentatively titled 86, and it's essentially the logline is a rag t- um, at a diner on the edge of space, a ragtag ru- ragtag crew of restaurant workers, uh, you know, try to make their dreams come true while working through the hilarious hijinks and hardships of their restaurant. So it's like mm. the bear meets Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, because there's welcome. always going to be it. yes, it's always going to be like. <laughs> Super stressful examples. So you're, you you're going to be the good-looking yeah. bear. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> there will be literal bear ca- bear characters. In it, so, um, but you know, and it's he just, is just right. <laughs> not too hot, not too cold. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Yeah. He, uh, it's I don't know. It's, it was born of just wanting to make something like, you know, a next the next great kind of space comedy cartoon. Now, well, wait, this, that's uh, fun. this is a serious question. Uh, AI should be help, helpful in, in uh, animation here pretty soon, right? To, uh, to help it's doing a lot of work. Should that's lower, true. The budget, lower the budget. Um, Do you know anything mm. about to keep up with that? A bit. I'm, I'm on the periphery with that one specifically, more with some other aspects of AI. But with that one in particular, I think that it can do a rough job and you could pay fewer people to touch mm-hmm. it up. It's still not great, right. but it is developing. Yeah. However, for Do- me... Don't you don't you think ultimately it spells the the end of humanity and really doomed <laughs> for our entire civilization? So what's interesting is that we're, is the word humanity because the arts are so human. That's what makes us human. And right, AI right. The is humanities. increasingly yeah is increasingly yeah. taking that humanity away. And we talk about like a you know end of world scenario. And who knows exactly what that could be or what that would look like? But probably a heat dome. Oh wait, that's already happening. Yeah, yeah, right. Hottest this last year, the hottest on record. So. If it's not that, then they're just going to take everything we love away, and I don't know what's going to become of us. What will we spend our time doing if not that? Mm. Mm. Listening to the podcast (laughs) (laughs) from the past. (laughs) The robots will listen to the podcast. My positive spin. Mm -hmm. I I I hear you. I don't. I mean, it could easily. I I wasn't being negative. (laughs) 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 Go robots! (laughs) (laughs) You're just you're just trying to lay some groundwork so they have something to listen to. I I I I think he's okay. I meant that in a positive way. I mean, uh, there's a lot of like route uh, route uh, mechanical things. That have to happen for animation that, yes. that could easily be done. Well, by, that's by what you. AI, yeah. uh, you know, is trying to solve. I, I mean, like uh, certainly a part of it is not to create new things, but to to get through some of this grunt work that mm-hmm. needs to be done. And right. and in in that way, it could be helpful. Yeah, and it, like from a from an artistic standpoint, as I am not a musician, um, it can help. I've used it a couple times to help with composition, like mm. to see what a piece of artwork is going to look like where things lie in the artwork so Mm. that I can have a more dynamic composition. Because once I lay on the paint, uh, there's a little less wiggle room. I just have to paint over it. For instance, with um, our Fables poster, Mm -hmm. um, Mm. the dragon that's on our Fables poster, I I knew what I wanted to see, but I needed to be able to see it to draw it. And I uh, used an AI generator in Canva to create this dragon. And then I drew the dragon. And I, that's the one that's eating sure. us on the poster. So mm-hmm. it, I've used it as like a kind of backpedal, not backpedaling, but kind of a, I can't think of the word. And you're looking at me like. So you are part robot now, too. I have well, you know, swallowed co- robot. <laughs> Coincidentally, I, I, I used to write a lot of screenplays until I realized Great. there's no, <laughs> no, no end game for it. But I, I had an idea for one the other day, and I just couldn't flush it out. I went to ChatGPT, yeah. and I said, you know. This is what it's about. This, this is the genre. The, here's some of the elements. You know, g- g- give me the plot points. And it, it was it would still take a human to finish it, but it did come up. It was like, oh yeah, those are those are some of the plot points that would have to be hit. And Good it, job, little robot. It did help flesh it out, <laughs> but you, you, it would not. You could not have finished it. Right. I mean, I speak kindly to the chat bot when I go on OpenAI. I'm polite with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, aside, you should but, definitely be yeah. polite but, to the things yeah, right yeah. now. Hey, holy, you never holy. know. It could be taken record. <laughs> It'll destroy your I've watched rating. enough sci-fi, so. <laughs> but no, to, I mean, to answer that, yes, it is a very helpful tool, and it can. I think one thing that will have to be really thought about and considered in the future is whether to use that and to use that for your project or your production or collaborate with other humans mm-hmm. and have that. Because mm-hmm. I love collaboration. I love it so much. Bands, mm-hmm. acting troops, whatever. And so I'm choosing to get this work to these people and have them do the designs. And I've seen their work and I like it. And I think mixing their personalities and their skills 
with my ideas in this project, I, I think it's going to be great. What, yeah. what are they using? Uh, what, what software? Do you know? I'm not sure. Yeah. One's like one's what doing character and using, concept Jake? art. The other one's <laughs> doing animation. So, <laughs> but it <would> premiere. Premiere. <laughs> I mean, the, uh, the, uh, the interesting thing is, is uh, for for screenplays, uh, even before the AI, it got really so formulaic. You know, you, you right. get that like Save the Cat, or or you get any of these mm -hmm. these books, is, or the the hero's journey. It's got to hit this yeah. point. They would say sometimes the studios would follow like the hero's journey, and if you didn't, if they couldn't match up a point to a point, and I think that you can see that in some of the the. Some of the Hollywood productions are just too uh, mm. formulaic. Formulaic, mm -hmm. yeah. Formulaic. yeah. Yeah, they're not taking risks, which is kind of killing them. That's why they're kind of one leg in the grave at this point mm. over there. And I don't know. I've noticed that there are a lot of people doing their own things. I have people, my friend mm. Kyle Faber, he's shooting his own films. Other people out there doing their own projects. And it's... In L.A. Yeah, in yeah. L.A. And, I mean, they're also doing that, the, like, big corporate work as well. Mm. But to really fuel their souls and to give some damn life to the place mm -hmm. they're doing their own and you, thing and you need a human being for that and you, when you do see something that jumps right out at you yeah. something that's got that original uh, you know creative thing it jumps right out at you I watched a crazy movie last night little side little side note here uh, it was called uh, Sa Sasquatch Sunset <laughs> oh I uh, and it oh. was amazing um, <laughs> it's it's like a nature film but then there are just Sasquatches in it there's no English and, and the, there's no verbal language there's no verbal language right. there's a lot of grunting are they real yeah. Sasquatches or? sure uh, <laughs> casting was I'm real trouble for that <laughs> that was yeah catering was I trouble just, for that I, what do the things eat but yeah, I, that, that I, was a movie that it's not a sequel something totally different <laughs> highly enjoyable I just had this uh, mashup of um, what was it Sasquatch, Sasquatch Sunset Sasquatch Sunset Boulevard <laughs> uh, <laughs> so with Norma Desmond, you know, the screen, you, the movie's never left me, you know, <laughs> except as a Sasquatch. <laughs> a squatch I never, never left, left the woods. The woods <laughs> left me. It's been a minute since Harry and the Henderson. So. Uh -huh. No, but Sasquatches are totally coming back. I watched, I watched an independent-ish. It was on Netflix, but I think it was a, made by an independent. It was uh, December May was the name of the movie. Oh, yeah. The uh, one about the two ladies. Yes. Mm. It was weird and cool and interesting, and you know, it just was something to uh, something to watch. It was one and of those referencing referencing like a May December relationship where one person is younger and the other person is older. Yes, yeah. hmm. yes, and I, I did not know that. Mm. So you got to be you got a uh, <laughs> open mics to play out there, jazz, or are you, oh yeah, you gonna, gonna, up, you gonna hook up with a band right away? Or oh man, that'd be great. Um, <laughs> Flea, I definitely Flea lives out there. All yeah, of the Red Hot Chili yeah. Peppers. Oh yeah. Who was the guy that you? <laughs> what what did you do? Just write him and say, hey, let's hang out. <laughs> yeah. No, he just walks around. Dear Mr. Park. John Fushante, no, no. can I play guitar with you? <laughs> No, no. Excuse I, me, Mr. Flea. This is this is true. I was in LA once. I was walking around Hung Echo Park, Flea. and everyone was like, "Did you see Flea? Flea was just walking around. He evidently lives around the pond." Yeah, of course. The pond. Yeah, they're natives out there. Yeah. Man. So you're like, no, I didn't see Flea. Who was the the musician that you and Thaddeus went to see, and he couldn't get in because he was underage? Oh, uh, Giacomo Tura, man, this little short Italian pit bull funk guitarist, man. He's great. Yeah, we went up there. I didn't know that that. I thought Thaddeus was 21 for the last, like, three years. <laughs> and just turned 21, like, recently or something. And so we went up, and I didn't see that it was a 21 plus, and so we couldn't get in. They wouldn't even put X's on his hands. I wasn't going to drink anyway. I was driving. So he found the sound engineer outside, and he said, hey, man, he explained our case. And the guy said, well, let me talk to my boss, and I'll see. Sure enough, that worked. We got in. X's on the hands, fine. And then we got to enjoy the show. Now, cool. was he a, a, a jazz or, or he d pop he, music? Uh, I mean, he, does, he does like jazz funk fusion. And what's his name? Giacomo Tura. Giacomo Tura. He's getting ready to tour in the U.S. here. He's very good. Ooh, very fun. Cool. Okay. Maybe he'll come to Harrisonburg. He might come nearby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was a really interesting going to the uh, chapel, the... Uh, Martin's, uh, no, it was in Layman's, Layman's, oh, Layman, uh, Layman's yeah. Auditorium, which was, we called the chapel, and then uh, I was there in the 70s, and you were playing all that 70s-inspired music, and even Superstition. It was, huh. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he put some <laughs> modern stuff in there. We did some yeah. Tom Mish, we did uh, Stevie Wonder, he did, who else we did, Erica Badu, that was something else, so it was really oh, nice fun. to play that here. Um, you know, we do have a diverse music scene, I just want to see it more yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. Oh, you've, you've got to love it oh, but you have absolutely and you got great confidence mm -hmm. anybody ever tell you that you got Maybe. good confidence i mean that <laughs> yeah. to, me, to me that is like 
That'll that'll take you somewhere. I mean, I don't know where it's going to take, but it'll take you somewhere. Sure. Well, what, I what, mean, what he has, is, which will probably work really well in that industry, he's trying to break into, is the confidence, but still like the likability. Mm-hmm. You know, because yeah. you don't want to be like overbearing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. the greatest thing since French yeah. toast. No, you know, yeah. uh, you want to be you want to be yeah. confident, but still. I was, I was never French, that impressed with French, French toast. No, French yeah. toast. <laughs> that's good, sliced man. bread. That's, that's, Ooh, that's, that stuff is impressive. I'm a waffle guy. Hey, right. So, um, I I got a weird question for you. So the um. I know, you know, moving out to L.A. is a, it's a big deal. Uh, are, is there something that you're worried about? Like, to me, and I don't mean this is a negative sure. thing. Sure, no, no, no. Because, like, to me, like, when you're worried about something or if you're nervous about something, it shows that it's important. And I just wonder, like, you know, when, you, when you're heading out there, you know, you got something you're not necessarily worried about, but just, like, you know, apprehensive, nervous, a little... I'm carrying, right. yeah, I'm carrying a whole bag of worries with me. Man. Yeah? But, you know, I think we, whenever we take these big steps... That's what follows. We yes, carry that with absolutely. Us. The point is to, you know, have the courage, have the br- bravery, have the belief and going through with it. And, you know, people worry about failing and it's, yeah, it can really suck to fail. But what's great is that you learn. And then yeah. you, when you fail, you get closer to success. Yeah. And I've always said that, like, at the end of my days, I don't want to look back and say, man, I wish I would have tried that. And you hear that a lot. People yes. say that all yeah, the time. Right. But it's so true. Mm. It is so true. It informed a lot of decisions that I made earlier in my life. And I could have been a informing. rollerblading champion. Exactly. <laughs> no, that's that's that is a really good attitude. It I mean, is. I just, I, we, I and was, I, I I I just I, I like that kind I of perspective because it does force you to, uh, you know, you, you f- you're focused on what's important, and I think that's awesome. And. I, I wish you the best. I think it's awesome that you're going. Please don't forget us out here Never. in Harrisonburg. I love here. And the East Coast, folks. <laughs> uh, uh, you're wrapping it up, aren't we you? Did, we yeah, did reach right out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought we didn't have the 69th episode song. Yeah. Oh, is there a song? I, there a song? Try, I tried to write something earlier today. Let's hear it. I think yeah, I have a chord progression I can play. I don't, All right. I don't have words. Uh, <laughs> That's why we can improv. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so we'll just have yeah, nice. time as, why don't, why as Jake we, gets uh, his guitar out here. Why don't we oh, finish the episode? Oh, there's a guitar and everything. Why don't we finish the episode, and then we can play this after the, the thingy? <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, we can do that. No, no, no. You can't go, ahead oh, okay. get, go ahead and get your things out. For all you in the audience, he's pulling out this psychedelic uh, oh, my guitar. God. Got, it has three it's fretboards. Beautiful. And, uh, it is beautiful. It's 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 yellow and I mean pink. not as beautiful as he is, Mind but it's yeah. still pretty Mind pretty nice guitar. There are red monkeys all over it, and uh... <laughs> oh well, okay. <laughs> You've been listening to Bingo is Life, a post Bingo Harrisonburg podcast, brought to you uh, with help from Ruby's Arcade, located hey! in the historic downtown uh, Thank you, Wine Ruby's. Brothers building in uh, historic downtown Harrisonburg, the historic and modern. As you've just heard, lots of things happening in this town, uh, including uh, Bingo is Life uh, in Reality at Ruby's Arcade on Tuesday <laughs> evenings at 7.30 every Tuesday evening. Join us for that and uh, and play some bingo and bowl your hearts out. And, uh, wow. <laughs> and join us on the interwebs here for the podcast each week at your leisure. Great. Thanks very much. Jake, thanks for being here. Good luck in L.A. Everybody stay tuned for some music after the end of the show. Uh, Take it away. We'll see you next week. Oh, and a shout-out to Grayson. Grayson! Grayson. And and a a a shout-out. I'm off this week, so I don't get to hang out with my team at work. But uh, one of the the, the, uh, people that I work with, she just had a baby today. So congratulations, Molly. Congratulations, Congratulations, Molly. Yeah, you guys have a good week. Bye. Bingo is Life, a post-bingo Harrisonburg podcast, is brought to you by the Brothers Shell and our friends at Ruby's Arcade in downtown Harrisonburg, Virginia. If you've enjoyed the show and feel it's worth spreading a little joy in this world, please tell just one person that you like this podcast. Word of mouth, more than any other form of promotion, is how creative works get noticed and sustain themselves. Thank you, Andrew Hickey, for that bit of wisdom, and thank you, listeners, for being part of the fun. There's a meal for me and a meal for you. We've got plenty to eat and there's dinner for two. Yes, come eat with me on this meal that's so divine. Flipped over numbers like 69. Though today here we are, this 69th episode. Here we go. On and on. That's kind of all I have. Yay! You knew him when, ladies and gentlemen. You knew him when. Oh, that was good. That was good.